This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. Welcome along to an interactive introduction to MATLAB. This is the first in a series of screencasts that are designed to introduce you to using the basic concepts of MATLAB. The screencasts accompany the main course material, which can be found in the PDF file. If you've watched the first screencast, which demonstrated how to best use this material, then you should have the PDF file opened in either your browser or Adobe Reader. That makes it very simple to use the links built into the document to access the screencasts. In this first screencast, we're going to explore the different areas of the MATLAB desktop. We're also going to look at doing simple calculations in MATLAB and also look at how to access the different help mechanisms within MATLAB. At the moment, I'm logged into one of the School of Engineering Teaching Lab machines. So let's start MATLAB. The shortcut can be found in the Start menu, under All Programs, School Applications, Science and Engineering, Engineering and Electronics, and MATLAB. And you'll notice we're using MATLAB version 2009A. So when you launch MATLAB, you're presented with what's called the MATLAB desktop. And at the moment, the main window that's highlighted is the command window. Now this is where we're going to enter most of the commands that we give MATLAB. So let's try a few simple calculations that you might normally do on your calculator to get a feel for how MATLAB works. So we can type a simple addition, press enter, and we get the results displayed in the command window. Equally, we can do a subtraction. We can do an exponentiation. And we can do multiplication and division in the same manner. And you can see that we build up a history of these commands in the command window. To the right of the command window is the workspace browser. Now we'll discuss the workspace browser in more detail when we look at variables in a later screencast. But for now, you'll notice that there's a variable called ands in the workspace and it contains a value of 4. Now that corresponds to the last calculation that we did in the command window, which was 2 squared. Below the workspace browser is the command history window which, as it says, stores a history of all the commands that you enter at the command window. So you can see in there today the commands that we've just entered. And that's useful because if you want to reuse a command, then you can just select it in the command history window and drag it back to the command window. You can then either execute it as is, or you can change it and then execute the new version. You can also access the command history by using the up arrow in the command window. So you can see if I press the up arrow a couple of times, I get back some of the commands that I've previously typed in. And obviously I can execute them again. To the left of the command window is the current directory browser. And this contains a list of files that are in my current directory. And you can see I have a few .mat files a .figure file and an Excel file in my current directory. When you launch MATLAB, you'll find that you have a MATLAB folder created for you. And this is where you should store any work that you need to save during the MATLAB session. And you'll see at the top of the MATLAB desktop, there's a box containing the path to my current directory. Now, if I wanted to change this path, perhaps to find some other files in my computer, there are a few mechanisms for doing that. I can use the little disclosure triangle to visit any previous paths that I've been to. I can use the up directory button to go up one directory from the current one. Or if I want to go to a completely different place on my hard drive, I can press the browse for folder button and choose a completely different folder. But since most of your work will be done in your MATLAB work folder, that's where we'll stay for just now. Now MATLAB has a couple of built-in help mechanisms that are very useful. 
The first one is called the Help Browser, and you access that by clicking on its icon in the toolbar. The Help Browser contains help for all the different MATLAB toolboxes, as well as the core MATLAB product. And it's very easy to navigate. For example, if I want to get some help on how to perform a square root, I can just type that into the Help Navigator. And it returns a list of documentation from the different MATLAB products on square root. And looking down that list, I know from experience that I'm interested in the SQRT function, which is how to perform a square root in MATLAB. And when I click on that, I get the appropriate documentation. It tells me how to use it, and it also gives me an example. So that should be the first place you go to look for help in MATLAB. Now, if we return to the command window, there is another way of getting some quick help. If you know the name of the command that you're interested in using, but you just can't remember how to use it, then you can get some help directly in the command window. You type help followed by the name of the command. So for example, if I want to use the square root command, I know it's called SQRT and I can type that in and it provides me with a brief bit of help upon how to use it. So to recap on this screencast, we've looked at the different areas of the MATLAB desktop, we've performed some basic calculations in the command window and we've looked at the two help mechanisms built into MATLAB. This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.